What if I told you there's a brand new test, in fact, a bunch of them, that you can take at home to assess your Alzheimer's risk today? The first is simply taking your blood pressure. That's right, new science says knowing your blood pressure number could determine your Alzheimer's risk. Joining me is Dr. Richard Isaacson, director of the Alzheimer's Register Clinic in your Presbyterian Wild Cornell. Thanks for being here as well. Course, Please you. explain to us how high blood pressure can impact on someone's Alzheimer's risk. Well, we've learned so much that just understanding your blood pressure numbers, the top number and the bottom number, can predict whether or not you will be at risk for Alzheimer's disease. And lowering that number can cut your risk by almost 20%. This is a new study that came out that's yeah. provo provoking a lot of doctors to rethink this. Were you surprised at how low that, that 120 is below what we normally consider a problem? I think for a long period of time, people have said, ah, oh, 140s, 150s, 160s, oh, it's fine, exercise, diet, whatever. But we're realizing that 140, I don't think so. 120s can cut your risk. There's normal and then there's optimal. And understanding the difference is the way for way forward towards prevention. And again, it's, it's the top number you're talking about, the 120. What about the lower number, the, the 80? The lower number is important, but I think most of the evidence supports knowing the top number and getting the top number down. From midlife, even in later in life, getting the number down from 140s to 120s can make a huge difference. All right, so you got a brain for us, yep. and you're a brain specialist, so I won't tread on your mm -hmm. area, but a normal brain theoretically might look like this, but on the inside, you'll often see this. Exactly. And this, this poor person, unfortunately, had probably blood pressure that was high, going higher and higher until they had a stroke. And these black areas over here are actually stroke areas where the tissue dies. The blood explodes in the brain, and then the person can't think. They can't remember. They lose touch of their past memories. And this is just a terrible thing that's preventable. And if we can control our blood pressure, know your numbers, we can reduce our risk. So I'm going to go back to these numbers. All right, so your blood pressure might be in the Alzheimer's risk zone. You might not know because the numbers have changed. Remember, we're talking about your top number ideally being sort of over here, right? The 120 zone, right? Now, we used to think the risk zone was here, right? The 140, right? And all, all these numbers are the problems, the 150s, the 160s, over to whatever it became. But as more and more evidence has come out, we realize we need to backtrack this. So maybe 140 was okay yesterday, but not anymore with today's new information. You gotta backtrack this baby back to 120. And that's the new target, right? Anything above that 120 ends up being in the, the new risk zone. So Wendelin is here, audience member who says that she falls in the risk zone, didn't you still? Hi. So what, what number are you at? Well, um, right now I'm usually between like 140 and um, 150, but um, the highest I've been was like 180 over 117. So I just showed you the brain of someone whose blood pressure was high with Dr. Isaacson. And now with this new study, we know that you're, you're right in the smack middle of this high risk zone. Right. Does it concern you? It concerns me a lot because I have family history of high blood pressure and dementia as well, so it is concerning. So they're going together a little bit right. more than we thought. But I don't want you worrying. Come on over here. Dr. Isaacson <laughs> says there's things happening that are dramatically changing the field that could help you. Hi. So, Dr. Isaacson, why shouldn't Wendland be worried? It's a new era in Alzheimer's disease. We can use the term Alzheimer's and prevention in the same sentence because there are things you can do today to get your blood pressure down. Most doctors may say, oh, 140s, 150s. You can talk to your doctor and say, I want to do better than that. You can cut the salt in your diet. You can exercise more. You can change your nutrition. There are so many things you can do. And when in doubt, you may need to take a blood pressure medicine. Which I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm glad you're jumping on it. But I'm going to show you something. Because one of the things we got to do is track. You, you knew your numbers were high. Most of the people probably watching right now don't really know what their numbers are. So their technologies, simple technologies, there's a share care app. Let me just put this on for you to see it. There's a share care app, right? And if you open it up, you're going to see that it asks you basic questions. But over here, there's a little spot that tells you to take your blood pressure, right there, blood pressure. And that blood pressure, when you're measuring it, you put the number in there, whatever it happens to be. And then it will give you real tips, concrete things of how to manage it, right? Some from yours truly, but others as well, right? And then when you download the app, right, right it gives you a little extra incentive. You want a little extra incentive? Sure. You always into incentives? Of course. <laughs> right. little, little extra push, right? Push, yeah. This is how valuable this is, right? I want you all to recognize, there's going to be a special blood pressure awareness challenge where you can get a chance to win a spa retreat. That's how much we care about you all. <laughs> so go to the ShareCare app, look for that little incentive. Is, is a little R&R &R good for the blood pressure? I want some. Can I enter to win? No, you're not eligible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's simple to do. That, this is the kind of thing we're talking about. It is the new era you spoke about. Alzheimer's prevention do work together, and why not take advantage of the number one thing you fear 
and avoiding it. Coming up, an at-home test you can take right now to assess your Alzheimer's risk. All you need is a pen, a paper, and a few minutes. So grab those. We'll be right back. My entire audience has their pens and papers ready. Get yours ready, too, because there's a new at-home test to spot the warning signs of dementia. I'm back with Dr. Isaacson. Joining us is neuroscientist and author of the, the best-selling novel, Still Alice, Dr. Lisa Genova. This test is called the SAGE test. What does that mean? Yeah, so this is a test that screens for issues with cognition or changes in cognitive function over time. And so this is a test that you take at home. It's pencil and paper, it takes about 15 minutes. Yeah. And I'm really excited about this because it helps give us the opportunity to have some control and power and awareness over our brain health. Yeah and can facilitate a conversation with your doctor about brain health. So I want you all to look at how the SAGE test works. Part of the test is something that I need to remember, and you have to as well. It's the last thing we're gonna do, and this is how you're gonna check if your memory's intact. So Dr. Isaacson, what is that? So at the end of the test, we want the whole audience to scream out, I am done. This is really important, because what we're doing now is we're telling you to do something, and we're gonna check your short-term memory to see if it's intact later. And this is important because Alzheimer's disease is a memory problem and it starts deep in the brain in a place called the hippocampus. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test out how your hippocampus is working today. All right, let's come on, join me. Let's go over the SAGE test. The next question tests the part of the brain that controls language and comprehensive. We want you to start writing down 12 names of different animals. Not reptiles or fish, animals. Audience, go ahead, no time limit. Dr. Genova, explain why this is important. Okay, so this is a test of verbal fluency. So if you have difficulty with retrieving and naming words in a category, so like animals, vegetables, cities, this is often one of the first signs of cognitive decline. I'm going here. So let's see how you do. Cows and cats. I was going alphabetical order, but all right. Dogs. Handwriting. Right. Elephants. What they teach you about handwriting in medical school? It's one of our best. What's F? Oh my goodness. Frogs, that doesn't count. I'll go for giraffes. I'll skip that one. All right, well, I won't go through all 12, but okay. so two, four, six, seven, I got seven, let's see, I, I got here and I stopped. Do, do I panic? What does the audience members who doesn't get all 12 Right, do? right, so this is not a diagnostic test. So this test can't tell you if you have Alzheimer's or whether or not you will get Alzheimer's. So if you don't get all 12, do not freak out. We have days where we have slower processing speeds or we have that tip of the tongue, like, oh, what's the name? But if you consistently can't finish it or your ability to, to do this test worsens over time, this is something you can bring to your doctor and have a conversation about. I just thought lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> all right, so anyway, next test. Test the uh, controls of sensory information and vision. I want you to copy this little picture of a box. And while you're doing that, Dr. Isaac's gonna explain what that, what that teaches you. This is a complicated test because it's trying to assess the function of multiple parts of your brain. First of all, you need to see the box. Then you need to process it. So that's the back part of the brain. Then you need to draw the box. Uh-oh, Oz, what are we doing here? I'm trying to connect. I'm trying. So the back part of the brain, the front part of the brain. Oh, come on, that's not bad. It's sideways. I know. Side <laughs> You're a God. surgeon. This is important. <laughs> Right. Uh, but it's basically assessing all the different parts of the brain together, and it can understand if this part versus this part versus that part may not be working well. See, that is the wrong size box. It's, squ it's square with different shape, different perspective. Are you looking for that or just making the box? Just make the box. <laughs> oh, just make the box. <laughs> God, he's always a problem, Isaacson. All right, so the final question is, this requires several regions of the brain that handle spatial visual functioning and fine motor control, right? And it is? Oh, you're gonna draw a clock. A clock? Yeah. We're gonna make it five after 11 just to have one. Is that good? So obviously if you draw a clock like this, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, th this, this kind of test seems really simple just to draw a clock, but it's actually getting at a lot of different parts of your brain. So drawing, completing the circle, filling in all the numbers and in the right space and order, having the hands point to the correct time. This involves executive function, which is planning and problem solving, visual spatial skills again. It recruits a lot of different parts of your brain. So even though it's simple, it's actually a pretty sensitive screen for dementia. You all getting five after, five after 11 right? Yes. Okay, good. So um, these are all, again, they're all additional clues. So we're done, right? What, what do we do when we're done? They're the smartest audience in television. <laughs> you got it right. You remember to say, I am done at the end, which is maybe as important as all the other stuff put together. Why is the stage test so important, Dr. Genova? 
So I think that most of us are really comfortable with self-monitoring our heart health, right? So we might have watches or use apps that track our heart rate, the blood pressure, number of steps. And so we're used to thinking of our, our health and influencing our health from the neck down. But what about what's going on up here? So if you have history of Alzheimer's in your family, or if you're concerned, if you're just curious, you can take this test and get involved in your brain health and bring what's going on to an ongoing conversation with your doctor. And this is really important because we think it takes 15 to 20 years for your brain to develop Alzheimer's. So you've got a lot of time to influence what's going on with prevention. So aerobic exercise, Mediterranean diet, sleep. And then if something's going on and you've got Alzheimer's, detecting it early gives you the best opportunity to plan and manage the symptoms. Thank you for all the advice and for the pep talk. You. you can find out how to take the full stage test at DrOz.com. We put something special on Facebook with Dr. Isaacson on a big study he's just finishing. You'll want to know about him. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on new videos to live the good life.